For the first time in forever, both football franchises in New York came into the 2023 season with reason to be excited. The Giants made the playoffs last year, won a playoff game, and looked to have hired one of the best young coaches in the league. And the Jets, who have been a quarterback wasteland for their entire history, don't talk to me about Joe Namath, traded for a four-time MVP quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, to lead an offense that was already backed by a great young defense. And yet, here we are. Less than halfway into the season, the Jets are back to starting Zach Wilson after Aaron Rodgers got hurt literally 75 seconds into the season, and the Giants are, as of recording this, 1-4, and four, have never ran an offensive play with the lead this season, and might be the worst team in the league. These franchises have been absolutely inept for the past decade, the Jets for even longer than that. For the first time in a while though, coincidentally at the same time, these two had a light at the end of that losing tunnel last season. They both looked like they were finally turning it around. But they both made a crucial mistake. A mistake that will cost them dearly for years to come. A mistake that was born out of fear. The Giants feared that change would ruin their newfound momentum. Change from the obvious crutch at quarterback. How could they move on though from Daniel Jones after a winning season? After a playoff appearance? Sure, he's shown nothing to suggest he's anything more than a league average quarterback at best, but he won a playoff game, right? It wouldn't be right. It's not what a proper organization does. A legacy organization does. A legacy franchise rewards playoff wins with wildly lucrative contracts. For the quarterback at least, not the most explosive player on offense. And where did that bring you? Back to me. Look, there's no denying the Giants offensive line has been absolute dog water. <laughs> But Daniel Jones has also shown you what he is, and what he is at the end of the day is not special. Whether you believe he's hot garbage or still serviceable with better weapons, either way he's not going to be the reason behind most wins. And a quarterback that's not the reason for wins is not special. And a quarterback that's not special is not a quarterback that you should be paying that much money. Because that's why they can't pay a line to protect him or a better weapon for him to use. And maybe we're drawing conclusions early, but I don't think I'm jumping the gun here saying that the Jets' future plans probably don't include Zach Wilson. They already tried to replace him in the offseason, which I don't think is the wrong idea, they just did it in the wrong way. They chose to trade for an aging legend from Green Bay, because it worked so incredibly the first time, instead of drafting a quarterback of the future. Why? Again, because of fear fear that they would whiff on a quarterback pick again fear that they would once again embarrass themselves in the draft the jets have a long history of fucking up on quarterback evaluations on high draft picks chad pennington mark sanchez sam darnold and the most recent zach wilson but as a franchise you can't let that history scare you from building the future I begged both New York teams to take a chance and trade up for a quarterback in this past draft. It might have cost them a lot of capital to do it, but both were great situations for a young quarterback to go into. The Giants with a great offensive mind in Brian Dable and Saquon Barkley. The Jets with Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, and a great defense. But they both played it safe, overpaying for the mediocre quarterback play of Daniel Jones and trading for a quarterback that we know can be elite even if he probably only has a few years left. It might have been unprecedented for the Giants to do it, but you can't tell me that Anthony Richardson, coached by Brian Dable, the man who turned Josh Allen into who he is today, doesn't sound amazing. Instead, for the foreseeable future, you're stuck with Daniel Jones. The Jets with Richardson's talent would actually be able to utilize the offensive weapons that they have. And with as good as he has been so far, you could easily see them being the team of the future. But they were afraid. Afraid of the unknown. Afraid of him being yet another draft bust. And traded for an older quarterback instead. And that injury, while incredibly unfortunate, is one of the risks of doing so. Richardson is even better sooner than expected. But both New York teams will have to watch him become a franchise quarterback in Indianapolis. While now, they're both left wanting a replacement at the position even sooner than I could have predicted. If you want my predictions for the future and want to see this stuff before it happens, or if you just want some more great content from me, 
do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button down below to join the community. I would really appreciate it. Abel's frustration with Jones is obvious on the sidelines. The Jets defense looks demoralized with the lack of help from the offense. These are the consequences of running an organization to not fail rather than to succeed. Success requires some risk. Success requires special. Success should be sustained, not gambled for, to be temporary. People love to point to the past to say that it can be done. You can win a Super Bowl with an average quarterback, if everything else around them is great. But this is not the age of defense anymore. Offense is king, and on offense, passing is king. The past 20 years, who have been the quarterbacks on the winning end of the Super Bowl? Mahomes, Stafford, Brady, Mahomes, Brady, Brady, Peyton, Brady, Wilson, Eli, Rogers, Breeze, Roethlisberger, Eli, Peyton, Roethlisberger, Brady, Brady. The two I left out, Flacco and Foles, the only two non-elite quarterbacks that have won a Lombardi in recent history, were on incredibly cheap contracts, thus taking up almost none of the salary cap, allowing the Ravens and Eagles to build great teams around them. And yes, Foles was the backup, but Wentz was still on his rookie deal as well, all three of them costing less than $7 million annually. So do you really think that the Giants are going to be able to do that while paying Daniel Jones over five times that? The answer is, and always was, no. This decision was always a bad one. It just wasn't as obvious as I thought it would be to most people. And the same can be said for the Jets. I understand Rodgers may have still had a little gas left in the elite tank, but even if he did, it'd be temporary and you have a very young roster. And injuries are the risk you take when trading for an older quarterback. Brady and Stafford's back-to-back -back Super Bowl wins with their new teams almost surely had something to do with why the Jets did this trade, trying to follow that blueprint. But those two have largely been the exception, not the rule. Of those 20 Super Bowl winning quarterbacks I just listed, 15 of them were drafted by the team they won with. Every logical way I can look at this, for both teams, their decisions in this past offseason made no sense. And yet, at the time, not enough people seemed to have a problem with it. Now, the state of football in the US's largest media market looks like it will continue to be what it has been for the past decade. Possibly for the next decade. Depressing and irrelevant. All because of fear. Fear of taking a chance on a guy that had all the traits you look for almost all the traits you look for in a franchise quarterback. Call it revisionist history if you want. Either way, Anthony Richardson is going to be a franchise quarterback. The caliber of quarterback that both New York teams will be searching for for the foreseeable future. <laughs>